Yeah, hello scrappers. Back in the workshop again. Yeah, today I thought I'd get out here and clean my workbench off a little bit. Got some bit of copper, tubing, a couple pieces, a little bit of brass. This needed to be cleaned up. And then I really thinking about just kind of dedicating the next few days to copper. Oh yeah. Swing this tripod around a little bit. Let me get out of the way. You can see here I got some motors here that I brought in. And then I got that little bucket back here that uh, is full. Of course that one on top has got aluminum windings. And then there's a couple down here that one on the floor and yeah I think yeah that one and yeah, this one right here got aluminum windings in it but I'll, I'll turn them apart anyway and try to get the cast aluminum off of it so and then I've got another one over here on that milk crate that I brought in the other day and then uh, got quite a bit of wire to strip and I got a wire stripper coming in different wire stripper coming in uh, Wednesday sometime Wednesday so I know that most of these tubes that I've got of course this one here is flared but a lot of these have uh, little brass compression fittings on them so I got this little bitty pipe cutter. I don't remember where I got this. Lowe's, Home Depot, something like that. Out here getting things set up and cleaned up a little bit of stuff. Almost getting too warm. Uh, I might throw this in a bucket and kind of get a weight. Just, just for giggles. Then if I cut it with a little cutter like that, then the brass will usually just slide off. I got a few here that uh, I'm gonna have a little more fun, but I'll show you how I kind of how I do those. Well, this one. I'm almost ready to shed this shirt. It was about 40 degrees when I came out here. I thought, well, I'll turn the furnace on for a few minutes. Yes, yeah, so that's sliding okay right, right there pretty much. So I'll cut it in close. Yeah, I got too tight. Let me hang on to the pipe with the pliers. Cheapy pliers. I got better pliers around here somewhere. Yeah, these little cutters, they pay for themselves in just a short time. Copper just falls right out of there. Let's see, do I have another bucket around? Yeah, there's one. I already had three nice fittings that I had a three quarter inch T and uh, it had some fittings on it. You know what I like to do a lot of times on these? I just crimp them where they fit in the bucket good. to a couple yards about how 
how to classify these little bits here where if I just get a coffee can and throw them in a coffee can and get a bunch and ask the yard how they classify them. That's the thing to do if you're not sure about something. You know, ask ask the yard you go to, take a sample in and and just ask them how they classify that. I guess if a person really wanted to, you could take a die grinder or put a grinder on a little Dremel and probably cut on both sides of that little brass ring and uh, get that brass off of there and then you got clean brass, clean copper. Just a little bit more work. And if I was going to do that, what I would do, i just get on it with a pair of needle nose like this and then get that die grinder, just cut both sides and that should just pop right off of there. There's a little Dremel tool with a cutting blade on cutting disc on it. And I might just do it that way too. I think I got some more over there. Anyway, once those are off, these nuts just slide off. 99% of the time they're brass, just uh, chrome plated. And of course, most of this would be number one. I got a solder joint right here. So uh, I'll cut down to that, and then that'll be, of course, that with the solder on it, that'll be number two. And I'll just take that off and throw it in my number two bucket right now. I'm not going to worry about it. Pretty much empty anyway. Yeah, my wife tells me my daughters are got their stimulus checks already, direct deposit today. So, oops, that's that solder piece, cup number two. So. She's kind of upset, saying, I need to call the IRS online. Because uh, the woman that did my taxes this last year, she put my bank account information in, but she uh, didn't put the last two digits, which define whether it goes into checking or savings. So the bank set, sent my return back, and then they mailed me a check. So I'm going to tell my wife, so what? Surely the IRS has the, you know, has the information that they mailed the check out, that they got the direct deposit return back, so they, they should know to go ahead and send our stimulus check through the mail. Now this, this here, I think I'm going to take a saw and cut it off flush. And from what I understand, you know, I got a little bitty piece of little pin in there it's magnet sticks to anyway that check should be in the mail one of these days my wife's all excited about it let's see if I can't I'm not sure if the punch is bigger than the pin. I think it might be. That pin is pretty small. Hmm. Now, yeah, worse comes to worse. I'll, uh, Put that in the vise and uh, I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not. You can see that little bitty pin in there. And it sticks through. 
and right up opposite there. Yeah, right, right in there. If the light will catch it, right. Let me see if I can get on. Yeah, it's not not quite long enough to get it with that. I had my good needle nose in here. Yeah, I can't really grab it with those either. Those are cheapies. I'll set that back for the moment, and uh, they may just take the grinder, cut into it here, cut that pin out, where it'll be clean, clean brass. Yeah, let's see if we can get this to slide down the shaft, down the tube, like this one. Which I find if I cut this tubing with a angle grinder or saws all or anything, then it leaves a, a burr on the outside and then your fitting doesn't want to slide off. Basically, this is all number one tubing. Here's a piece of clean brass. I think that's all solid copper. Yeah, I don't have a file over here, do I? Do I just scrap it? Scrape it? Yeah, that's copper. Yeah, it's got a little kink in there, which keeps it from sliding back any further, so I'll just try to push it all the way to this one end. And I'll try to cut the pipe as close as I can, and then hopefully it'll slide off of there. Yeah, I told my wife, so when we get that check in, we'll get us a new refrigerator and get down and get us a new bed. So I think that's probably why she's excited. So one fridge we had quit working, so I went down to the friend of ours has an auction. He had a couple of refrigerators down there, but it well we got he owed us some money anyway, so. Got us small fridge from him so we got something to use until further notice but it's uh, like I said it's a small fridge she really wants something a little bigger I'm trying to straighten this up or this will slide and that's got a little brass piece in there but it doesn't seem like it really wants to straighten Of course, it doesn't take much for these not to not to you know travel like they like you want them to. Sometimes you might be able to get in there and kind of crimp crimp it a little bit. Maybe get lucky. It's sliding a little bit now. Not much. So some of these you probably almost just have to just cut them off. See if we can do it with a hacksaw. Now, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do this, what I try to do is go do like the cutter and go all the way around. That way, you're not leaving the burr. Yeah, hacksaw is kind of slow, but really, for this, you don't. You're not cutting that much material out of there.
Okay, I think I'm pretty well done with that. Yeah, there's the little piece there. I'll put it over there with my other piece of the copper brass. But that's probably the best way to do that part. Just make sure when you're cutting it, you don't just cut from one side to the other side because you're going to end up on the side you come out, it's going to end up putting a burr. And another way you could possibly do this is just hold the saw stable and run your tubing back and forth on the saw and rotate it kind of as you go. Yeah, let's see if we can just break it off of there now. Yeah, popped right out of there. So that's an easy way to do that. Yeah, we've got several solder joints here. We've got a solder joint there. One on the corner, this corner, here, 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 and possibly right there too, so I'll just cut that off. So that number two, cut this solder joint off. solder joint. Yeah they are. I started put, they put up a, a place on the website where you can enter in your uh, direct deposit information but they haven't where the button's going to be for the link they haven't activated that yet so hopefully next day or two. I've seen a lot of different I haven't watched the videos, but I've seen the uh, seen them posted a lot of videos on you know, stimulus checks and information, and, which I don't know if you guys are watching any of those or not. I don't know what kind of information they're giving you if it's good or bad, but myself, I just went to the IRS.gov because I figured that's who's going to be sending the checks out anyway. It's going to be the IRS, so just go right to their page and see what they got to say. That way you know you're getting good information. Yeah, we're starting to get a little bit, a little bit built up in there. I don't even remember I think it was that last load I brought in that had that five gallon bucket and I still got all those spigots out there I need to bring in here too and clean them up. Should be a lot of copper, a lot of brass on that. And since that's way back here, I'll just cut it way back here. I don't have to slide it so far. Yeah, I've also got a couple statters right here, as you can see in the corner of the video, that I need to chisel down. So, so if I do, after I get all this 
copper here cleaned up. Then I'll probably chisel those down and then start tearing down some of the motors. In a way I'm trying to kind of go slow on some of this, that way I got content for future videos. I don't know why I'm worried about that. But uh, I know a lot of you guys are out there street scrapping. That's great. I mean spring this is the time to do it. Springtime, people are spring cleaning. Good time to get out and make that money. But uh, yeah, I know there's a risk there because could the stuff you're picking up be contaminated? You know. But then again, logic tells me that if I'm sick and running a fever, I probably won't be out there spring cleaning and throwing scrap out there at the curb. I'd probably say, well, that can wait. Especially if I am so why should I do all that work if I'm if the virus is gonna kill me the next few days or weeks anyway, you know? <laughs> yeah, I got a little cough, but you know that cough I always got had it for years, so probably from about thirty years ago when I quit smoking. I used to work for barrel reconditioner, fifty five gallon barrel drums. A lot of them were for solvent companies, oil field, and uh, the spray booth had about a about 18 inch by 18 inch or two foot by two foot uh, exhaust fan and uh, of course filter always plugged up easy, stayed plugged up and that time I also used to smoke and I'd stand a lot of times I'd be standing there painting and smoking at the same time and I got where I couldn't hardly breathe so that's when I quit smoking and that was about 32 years ago so I'm sure that had didn't do my lungs any good. I'm trying to get this thing to slide slide out, but it's not wanting to cooperate. So I got a pretty good chunk of copper here I can get a hold of. Yeah, sometimes they give you too much trouble. Get you a socket, half inch drive. Set that little copper tube down in there. Now the only th problem with this is it could flare it out where it's still not going to go through the hole. Which it probably did. Being a tough one. If I have to, I'll take the die grinder and uh, which I might show that on another video or something. But I go, if I want to do it right now, I'm going to have to run to the other room and uh, plug the compressor in. Here's a one that's kind of boogered up good. And uh, yeah, let me go ahead and got my angle grinder right here so uh, clamp down good set her over the, the handle there what I'm going to try to do is cut it as close to the brass as I can
And it lost a little bit of copper, but not too much brass. Now it's pretty flush. So again, I'll set it on top of my socket. Now what I want to do is get something that's pretty much the same size or maybe just a hair smaller. Try this punch right here. And it dropped in there really nice. There's a little bit of copper. There's a clean brass. This one's already clean. Now this one here, the brass is, or the copper is still up inside there pretty well. So, if I run the punch right down the center, the punch wants to stick or go right in there and sticks to it, so I just had to kind of hit it around the side, hit it around the edge. This is the same story, the copper is all the way up at the end, so just give it a tap, it knocks it 90% of the way down, just going to get it on the edge, here, pop dry right out. Of course some do, some you got to fight. to go down very well. It's almost down to the end of the brass. Okay, now we're at the end of the brass, so you've got to give it somewhere to go. So socket works pretty good for that. It popped right out. So sometimes a punch and like I say you can use a socket because it's got a nice big area here and some stuff you made to go to 3 8 drive that's been working pretty good with half inch Okay, that's, that was the tough one, but it finally popped out of there. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting holes in my gloves. About time to retire them. I just had a viewer here a few weeks ago ask where I got my gloves. Got them at Walmart. I just I was out there the other day and picked up some. Or by, uh, by where they have the work clothes, work gloves, stuff like that. And you get a couple pairs of blue. And then uh, about three pairs of the gray, the size large. I think that was about the only size they had that I saw. This is working home. So, give about five pair for five dollars. And it's pretty good. They can help give you a good, it's a rubber palm, give you a good grip. <coughs> if you're working on stuff a little oily and stuff, it kind of helps. And then you got cloth on the back so it helps your hands to breathe a little bit. And, uh, I got this little tray. I either want to keep that on the shelf and then I, I open these up. I just throw the gloves in there. You see, I was down to my last pair, so I thought I need to pick some up. I just put the gloves in there and then I got them where I need them. So you can't go wrong a dollar a pair, and they, they wear pretty good, they last a little while. Of course, now as far as cold goes, they they don't give you much uh, protection for as far as keeping your hands warm at all. Uh, better to stick with a jersey glove or a leather glove. Let 
me see. Once it gets down there, that one there goes inside, but the question doesn't flare it out as I'm trying to knock it downward. And if so, I might be better off with just a regular punch, hit the, put it on the edge, try tapping one edge down. I guess if I could, could get inside too and on the other side and spray a little WD-40 or a little silicone spray or something. Yeah, that does not want to turn at all. It's in there good and tight. Yeah, she's turning. <laughs> not willingly, but she's turning. I got a little bit of pneumatic oil here. A couple drops on each side. turning easier. But the question is, will it pop out of there? Looks like it went down a little bit. Need a punch that's pretty much exactly the same size as. And sometimes I'll save different rods, stuff like this. That one's too big, of course. Another thing, if you're looking for stuff and you can't quite find the right size, check some of your sockets. I think that little socket right there will work. Actually, the best way to hold that would probably be, probably be like needle nose vice grips or something, but I'll just try these. Sometimes you got to get creative. Got to make sure I'm kind of over the copper and not over the brass. Well, that knocked it down in there. I don't know if you can see that. So, knocked it down about as far as the socket would go to where the socket widens out. So sometimes you can use a socket as a, as a punch. These are just some cheapies, as you can tell. You can tell by the expensive holder that they're in. Okay, so now I wonder, can I get a hold of it here? There it is, yeah. A little bit of oil helped and then using that socket for a punch. So sometimes you don't never know what's going to work. Well, I just about got all the copper cleaned up. Uh, still got that little piece. Those are, sometimes they're kind of nice. You can hook them on the end of the garden hose if you put a shut off before it and then use it for a sprayer. Got a piece of brass here I got to clean up. And yeah, I got a couple here. This one's got a pipe up inside of it, so I'm going to probably just get the gr grinder, cut it here and here, and then I may have to make a cut around. Uh, We'll see. I can probably... Well, I don't know. I think I'll put it in the vise and do it. I don't think that would be the best way to go. 
and uh, I'll run this copper over there to the scale and see how much copper we got. Just a little produce scale. Took it right to the two pound mark. So that's two pounds of copper. I'll have to put the brass on the uh, my little scale in here in the other room. So I'll move my camera back where I can get through there. And the scale's already turned on. Yeah, let me dump it out of the bucket. Ten point nine ounces. Yeah, it was over half a pound. Put that in my, my bucket. Oh yeah, something I keep forgetting too is I have mentioned that I was gonna do a video on my shelf. And uh, so I might take a quick couple minutes here and explain. As you can see, I've got a little retaining wall down there because that originally was my greenhouse on the other side. You can see the, the window there. And that's how this whole area right here started out many years ago. I built it a little 8 foot by 8 foot greenhouse. And this is the north side of it here at the greenhouse. So, of course, for this room, that's the south wall. So, got a lot of stuff in there way down here at my feet but uh, on this for four buckets wide I made it uh, overall four foot six the two by four was cut at uh, looks like 52 and a quarter inches so four foot four and a quarter and uh, move these buckets out of the way it looks like the easiest where you can see in there Trying to move my monitor around and stuff. Now what I did, I took some one by four. So I got one by four uprights. So I took two one by fours, and then I cut some two by fours for shelving support, 16 inches. So it's 16 inches from the far back to the far front. And I got one, two, three, four of them. And uh, of course the first one is right down on the ground. And uh, my beard right. Try to kind of keep it covered a little bit. But as you can see, where the The upright goes across, or the shelf support goes across. On the back, I have the 2x4 laying down flat. On the front, I have it raised up. So it gives me enough space where the buckets will sit in there at their little angle. See if I can move my monitor a little bit closer, and then I can move the without unplugging it from the wall. And then I can move my tripod in a little more. See if I can get over here that way maybe you can get a better angle of the... So as you can see that one's on the floor. Now if you're gonna... Of course if you build this from the floor up you could probably get you know four shelves high if you wanted to. Now the distance between shelves is that one's got about 16 and three quarter inches between the top of this two by four and the top of this one so basically you could probably go off your cross two by fours get copper wires in the way I got a motor right at my feet so so coming off of that one from the very bottom the second shelf is two foot three Third shelf, 
top of this one is uh, 46 inches. Now basically your bucket basically your bucket is just over a foot wide so that's why when I went here I went like four foot four you know for the overall length so that gave me for four buckets it gave me like an inch or a little over an inch inch and a quarters roughly in between you know each bucket so that it wasn't super tight but uh, basically the bucket just rests basically on that back one and then up here on this front lip so really not much to it I used one one by fours like I said for the uprights the shelf support cross pieces are two by four and then going across here I had laid laid the one down and the other one standing up and the bucket sitting there at a nice angle it makes it easy to pull them out for dumping into your larger container. Uh, I guess if a guy wanted to, you could mount, you know, if you got a cement floor in your shop, you could put casters on the bottom and you could roll it around. You could, uh, you could make it double, double deep. Instead of going 16 inches, you could probably make it 32 inches and do this on basically on both sides and you could have it accessible from both sides. And if you had that, say, a nice big shop, you could have it right in the middle. So you could have, you know, some stuff on one side. You could spin it around and act, you know, to access the other side. You could have copper, brass, or, you know, most, most of what I tried to do, I put, tried to put the heavier metals down low. You know, up here I just have, you know, low grade wires. I got like ribbon wire here. But let me pan up that way you can see it. There we go. Ribbon wire here. So low grade wires in this one. This right now I just have. With gas hoses and stuff. This one here is going to be a heavy one, so I got you know copper bearing motors in it. That one there should probably be, you know, if that one gets full, I'm going to have to take them out by hand into another bucket. Uh, <laughs> that's all there is to it. There won't be no lifting that one out of there. And then I just put up on top. I've just got empty buckets up there. Yeah, you know, excess storage. And then you can always put hooks or something on the ends. I guess if you wanted to on the end, you could almost build out the same way on the end, and you could have buckets in there at an angle on the ends if you wanted. But I uh, thought I'd give you a quick overview on on that. I'm not sure how I'm going to title this video. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it for the shelf. Yeah, I thought about, thought about it for a long time, and then I saw... A picture of one a guy did and I thought hey I like that I like that that's pretty much what I wanted to do and then I just got out there and started putting it together I'm not exactly sure if this is the way he built it but it seemed like an easy build not a lot of not a lot of lumber I guess if you wanted to you could run a, a one by four or something at an angle across the back for for support but uh, I think I, no, I don't even have it. I think I got it anchored to the shelf over there, but I don't have it anchored to the wall. Probably wouldn't hurt to run a piece of strap or something, or a piece of a little L L iron or something. But uh, it's staying up there. It's working for me. So I'm going to call it quits on this video, and uh, I got the workbench manageable now. kind of. One of these days I need to really sit down and try to figure out how to organize this where I'll have a little better work area and a little better camera angle too. Like I said, i got this piece of brass here to clean up that piece. A lot of what's on here is just tools. i got one of them Harbor Freight magnetic strips up here. I've got another strip I need to put up somewhere and then i got a few magnets over here to this on my toolbox. I'm sitting there showing you stuff and I don't even know if you're if it's in the view of the camera but uh, I think some stuff like this screwdriver was shot so I just cut the end off where it's just square and I use it for punch or for prying 
but I kind of like having the, the workbench right here next to the work, uh, toolbox. That way, if I need something, I don't have to go too far. Just, you know, right there. I've seen a few videos online where guys are cleaning up their workbenches and stuff. Yeah, you know, mine are cluttered, piled higher and deeper, I say. Uh, I can pan around here. Try to zoom in. You can see that workbench is just <laughs> piled up. And I got another workbench right there. I got, do have a clean spot on it over by the window. But uh, that one there is mainly for my coin rings. And I haven't made any for a while. So that's why stuff's piled up. Of course you can see my little uh, sockets there that go on my drill. And then uh, of course on the back side of that pegboard is another workbench. that I got them back to back. And it's piled up with stuff. I'm thinking about trying to clean that area off and maybe make, uh, use that for tearing some of this down. But then I'd be a long way from the, from the toolbox. A lot of the problem with this workshop, it's just it's long and narrow. It's roughly about 11 foot wide or so. I got a, you know, about a 5 foot workbench on this side. About close to a 3 foot aisle. Walkway through there. Or there's my furnace. Then I got a ductwork going over to this to this little room over here. Yeah, there's there's the monitor. There, there's a picture for you. Now that would be a good picture right there for the uh, <laughs> for the entry of the video. But uh, this is a little eight by sixteen building I added on to this workshop. Of course, the ground was a lot lower, so I had to build a, a subfloor to set the set that floor up on. And that was my eBay room at one time. And now it's just got a lot of junk collected in there. And even, well, you can see the workbench right there. This, you can see that workbench. I got stuff piled up on it. So, yeah. I need to do a lot of cleaning. But uh, it's not bad in here in the wintertime. I can turn the furnace on, and then I got a little uh, torpedo, propane torpedo heater that heats it too. If it gets real cold, but it's kind of drafty. So, but I can get usually get it around 50 degrees if I need to, 45, 50, where it's not too awful bad. And uh, summertime though, it, this tin tin roof gets really hot. I still got three microwaves here to tear down. I got a couple in the other room. Hey, you can see tin roof, no insulation. So, summertime it gets pretty hot. That's why I built that other room outside the door and window there. That I do a lot of videos out there. It's got a door to the north and south, so I get a nice breeze. And it, that area stays shaded from shade tree. So, hope you guys stay safe. If you enjoyed this video and you liked it, please subscribe. And hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button once you do subscribe. And hit the like button. Give, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, share it with your friends. I could use the subscribers and I could use the uh, likes and it all helps to kind of promote the channel where others can, can find it and, and they can learn and I'm learning from you guys too. So uh, if there's something that I did that you think you have an easier way, uh, leave it in the comments. You know, because I don't know everything and I know how I do it and it works for me, but there might be an easier way. And I usually try to find the easiest, softest way to do it, the most productive, without too much extra work. But uh, yeah, I still got quite a bit in here to clean up, and I got two melt crates behind that that little barrel of motors. It's got miscellaneous junk in there I need to clean up. And if this virus gets over at the end of the month, then I'm gonna probably start getting a lot of calls. I had a call today. The guy had a uh, wash machine, but. Shoot, that guy's 30, 35 miles away. I thought, no, it's not worth driving that far for a wash machine. So I told him if I get another call out that way, I'd be out there to pick it up. And he told me it was out by the street, so it probably won't be there long anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I'll put another one out here in three, four days. Uh, like I say, in a couple days, I got that, uh, it's a Stripmeister. I didn't get the great big one, but I got the one with that with the motor and everything. So it's supposed to be in Wednesday. So Wednesday or Thursday, I might do a video on it with it stripping some wire. 
and I've got a barrel in there and I got some other stuff around here I got a lot of wire but I thought I'd try to get out here and clean some of these motors up so I might go ahead and start tearing some of this stuff down and cleaning it up even after the, this video yeah like I said today's Monday and it'll probably be tomorrow morning when I upload this video because I my internet is slow I got DSL but it's like 0 0.07 upload speed so it takes four or five hours to upload a video I'll be glad when we get the fiber optic in the neighborhood I've signed up for it so hopefully soon well I'm gonna go and you guys stay safe uh, keep scrapping if you got places to stockpile it you know stockpile what you can and till prices go up hopefully the end of the month or middle of next month hopefully prices will turn around and start getting better so until till the next video Bye-bye.